What is up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2024 Toyota Tacoma, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So obviously we're in this one because it has been completely redesigned for the 2024 model year. You got upgraded powertrains, a ton of new features. The inside looks completely different as well. And of course, you still get the two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance, which is always nice too. But ultimately in this video, we'll be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as the title implies, this review is going to be specific to the SR5 trim level. And there are a few different configurations for that SR5 trim. First one, you got the four x two six foot bed extra cab for $36,200. The four x two six foot bed double cab for $37,700. Four x four five foot bed double cab for $40,400. And lastly, the four x four six foot bed double cab for $40,900. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same and so this new power plant is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder putting out 278 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 317 pound feet of torque coming in at only 1700 rpm that's pretty good power sent to the rear wheels or all wheels through toyota's of course four wheel drive system there power sent to the ground through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately seven seconds mpg numbers coming in at 21 in the city 26 on the highway for the rear wheel drive 19 city 24 for them on the highway for the four-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the new taco here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 toyota tacoma here up to speed all right in three two one go. there's no spinning that's kind of cool yeah there's nothing wrong with that that's 60 right there so you're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. Honestly, 0 to 60 in 7 seconds flat for a truck? That's not that bad, guys. So, yeah, absolutely no issues with that. And uh, there really wasn't any substantial turbo lag that I noticed either. Because sometimes you do get turbo lag with uh, turbocharged four-cylinders. And, of course, it's going to be a little bit more pep at the initial punch with the V6 that the previous generation had. But still, that acceleration... I was plenty fine. You're not going to have any issues there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So as expected, you will find four-wheel ventilated disc brakes coming standard. As far as that 60-0 stopping distance goes, it comes in at a respectable 121 feet. As far as braking feel goes, it's a little bit on the softer side, but it's not bad. And again, that number, 121 feet, that's brilliant, quite honestly, especially for a truck. A lot of times with trucks, you will find upper 130s. Uh, with SUVs, you'll find 130s. Uh, so anything in the 120s, that's perfectly acceptable. Anything in the one teens is kind of sports sedan. So that is a plenty fine number. Braking feel is plenty fine as well. But then taking a look at the suspension and handling, because it is going to differ slightly depending upon the configuration that you go with here. So for example, up front, you're going to get independent double wishbone type front suspension but in the back you're going to find a leaf spring rear suspension for the extra cab but then a coil spring multi-link rear suspension for the double cab so that's going to be one of the big differences between the 2023 and the 2024 is that coil spring multi-link rear suspension it does continue though with the differences the extra cab is going to give you a front stabilizer bar only whereas the double cab is going to give you front and rear stabilizer bar so i did want to emphasize that as well overall as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today we do have some pretty darn smooth smooth roads here in Hagerstown, I will say that, but in my short little drive, I've had no issues whatsoever. As far as steering feel goes, it's a little bit on the looser side of things, uh, but it's to be expected for what this truck is. So I don't expect every single car to have the steering feel or handling of a sports car, although I all kind of want them to secretly. But yeah, as far as steering feel goes, it's perfectly fine. Absolutely no issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going uh, 25 miles per hour right now. So I'll let you guys be the judge. So there really isn't a heck of a lot of wind noise coming into the cabin. There was a little bit of road noise at higher speeds there, but it's nothing that would bother me personally. And taking a look at rear visibility, I can see one. 100% perfectly fine out the back. If you've ever driven a truck before, that's pretty much what it looks like in terms of rear visibility. So you already know. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 
Toyota Tacoma. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Toyota Tacoma, completely redesigned. But before we get into that, let me go ahead and start with where this one is made. As always, taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number three, indicating that the new 2024 Tacoma is built and assembled in Mexico, in case you were curious. But back to what I was saying, completely redesigned for 2024, now actually rides on a variant of the body on frame TNGA F platform, which of course is shared with the new Toyota Tundra. So it is completely different for this year to the sides led headlights do come standard they didn't used to come standard it used to be halogens if you guys remember that so i do love that with led daytime running lights do you get the automatic feature of course along with automatic high beams as well so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so definitely very convenient led fog lights down below that is going to be an optional feature we do have them i love how they're kind of incorporated into the front grille kind of like the new tundra as well so cool placement there and for anyone who was curious as far as ground clearance goes that is going to come in at 11 inches so Anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Tacoma. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, something else since we are around to the side of this one. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. You got the Tacoma lettering, of course, found on the front doors, but on the rear doors, you actually have the trim level badging. So if you're wandering onto a lot, maybe on a Sunday, a Toyota dealership near you, and you're curious about the trim level that you're looking at, go ahead and take a look at the rear door. So that's pretty cool. But cast aluminum running boards, we do have those today. They go for $1,199 in case you were curious and i will say they are somewhat needed so it was a little bit of a stretch for me to get in this one not quite as much as the tundra but still they were nice to have i'll just put it that way then take a look down at the wheel setup it is going to be 17 inch silver alloys for our sr5 trim level so i think they look pretty darn good but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one the first thing i actually noticed on this new tacoma that kind of stood out to me uh, is kind of integrated rear spoiler into the roof. So it's like an integrated roof spoiler. So I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can see it up there, but anyways, you do have the Tacoma lettering found on the tailgate, of course. If you go with the four by four, you do have that badging as well back there. Of course, you got the four and seven pin connectors just to the left of that license plate there. And as far as max towing capacity, it's gonna differ slightly depending upon the configuration you go with. For the extra cab, it comes in at 6,500 pounds. For the double cab, it comes in at 6,400 pounds. Then take a look down at the exhaust outlet there. It's gonna be tucked away underneath on the driver's side. And there are a couple of uh, finishes. You can get a chrome finish or a dark chrome tip. Uh, they go for $120 if you wanted either of those finishes. We'd have none of those, of course, but having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. It's been out since we are around to the back of the Tacoma here. When it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there is going to be a, uh, a lever on the tailgate itself, of course. Um, once opened up, though, as far as payload capacity goes, that comes in at 1,710 pounds. If you're curious, there's a deck rail system with four adjustable tie-down cleats back there. There's actually an SR5 upgrade package I wanted to mention, though, that goes for $3,075. It's going to give you LED bed lighting. There's an easy lower tailgate because this one that we have is not an easy lower tailgate. It will come crashing down if you just let it go but and that comes with a bunch of other stuff as well but that's going to give you a couple added things in the back at least but plenty of space back there nonetheless but then make your way up to the rear seats rear seat legroom comes in at 33.7 inches for our double cab obviously the extra cab is going to give you no rear seat so yeah i don't have to mention that one but for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there there of course this 60 40 split flip up rear seats with some storage underneath if you were to go with the double cab as well so i'll show that to you guys here power sliding rear window is going to be optional on the double cab we don't have it unfortunately but overall finished like a truck there actually is a 12 volt power outlet down at the bottom back there as well but so then make your way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard heated front seats is a 655 dollar option package at the cheapest it's going to be available in some other option packages as well but if you just wanted the heated seats it's part of a 655 dollar option package but overall as far as seat comfort goes 
I didn't have any issues. I mean, not the very most comfortable seats, but it's definitely not bad either for them being manually adjustable cloth seats. I'll just put it that way. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel here. It is tilt and telescoping. It's going to be wrapped in polyurethane, but leather wrap steering wheel is optional. So I did want to mention that. And overall, it kind of feels like the Tundra steering wheel, same design as well. So I kind of liked it, but then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. Essentially, everything is on one side of the key. You got your Toyota logo at the bottom, lock, unlock. So kind of basic, but it is a keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that black engine start button located just to the left of the infotainment screen there and so once started up so there's going to be a couple different gauge clusters what you were looking at is the basic gauge cluster it's going to be a smaller digital screen but it still has absolutely everything you need on there so it's all digital you got a digital speedometer tachometer surrounding it of course there's your average miles per gallon which i'm averaged like 22 miles per gallon by the way now that the car has been sitting of course it's going to show a lot less though of course it gives you how many miles you have left until you hit empty in the lower right hand corner there it's also the trip a trip b you can check out your radio information up there there's your tire pressure for each each individual tire up there that isn't always the case so wanted to emphasize that but overall gauges look fine but there is a 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster available for the sr5 and that will take up the entire screen so do want to mention that as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality auto dimming rear view mirror actually does come standard for the sr5 so you got to love that automatic climate control is going to be optional we don't have that today so i have absolutely no idea what actual temperature we're on but you just turn it to the left and to the right very easy to use i'll put it that way universal home remote is going to be part of a package option wireless phone charger part of a package option as well overall it did have some pretty cool little touches though so there's a lot of texturized finishes so like on the doors it's going to be like this rubberized texturized finish kind of like a grab handle there just below that kind of have this breathable storage just below so that was kind of cool i do like kind of the gloss black tacoma lettering found just above the passenger side glove box just above that you got a little bit more storage although i wish that was rubberized but still not bad i like that it's there and of course you got the glove box just below that and eh, i don't see any issues with that either but just surrounding the shifter you got a little bit more storage couple usb charging ports a 12 volt power outlet there as well just behind the shifter you got your cup holders and within the center armrest there's actually a decent amount of storage in there so Anyways, it's very functional, very to the point, as a truck should be, I guess you could say. But now let's go ahead and check out the infotainment screen here. It's going to be an 8-inch color touchscreen display for our SR5, Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You got to love that. Eliminate the pesky wires. And also check out your driving statistics up there. That's pretty nice. And of course, your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're going to find a six-speaker sound system that comes standard, but then there is an optional 10 speaker JBL sound system with a couple of the package options if you wanted to go that route. But having said that, we do got the six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, for six speakers, that's really not that bad. There was a good bit of bass going on there. Clarity was perfectly fine. This isn't that big of a cab size, so... Uh, that one, sound system works really well for the Tacoma. I'll just put it that way. I didn't have any issues. Obviously, if you like music, go with the JBL, but that wasn't bad. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the taco in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always it's going to lead us into safety. So front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tether to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, temperature monitoring system, but also coming standard Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, proactive driving assist, lane departure alert with steering assist, road sign assist, dynamic radar, cruise control, and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. That's those little car icons in your side mirrors, letting you know if somebody is in your blind spot. That comes standard for the SR5. That's pretty cool. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Tacoma SR5, I do like the new coil spring suspension. It was plenty fine. Rode perfectly fine on our super smooth roads here in Hagerstown. I will say that, but also wanted to do a little bit of light off-roading with it, overlanding, I should say. So wanted to show that to you guys. That turned out perfectly fine for me as well. And I mentioned that because historically, the Tacoma is known for very good off-road capability maybe not this specific trim level although i'm sure it would do just fine but there are some other trim levels that would absolutely crush it off-road although in my light overlanding this one was perfectly fine i'll just put it that way overall though i will say i've always been a fan of the tacoma the one thing that i'm 50 50 on is the new engine not that there was anything wrong with it when i was driving of course but long-term reliability 
I don't know. I don't know how it's going to do. But I do know Toyota and Lexus traditionally test the living crap out of all of their engines before they actually put it out to the public. So I'm sure they did a ton of R&D in order to know that it would be plenty reliable. But that would be one thing in the back of my mind. That V6 was plenty fine. And the difference in fuel economy between the old V6 and the new turbocharged four-cylinder isn't that substantial. So if it were me, I'd probably go that route. But I will say one thing I am looking forward to is a hybrid version of this truck, which I do believe is coming very soon. So anyways, let me know your thoughts of the new Tacoma SR5 in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see different spy shots of these vehicles before they actually get to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.